And for Fairmont State, this would be their first national title in any sport. Opening tip goes out of bounds, and it will be Falcons basketball. Our officials, James Durham, Kevin Chambliss, and Tyler Kumpf. And you'll see Northwest Missouri State 99% packed in man-to-man -man defense. They really are the opposite to Fairmont State in their approach to defense. They want to contain you, not come after you. Binkaya inside, and it won't go. And Brett Doherty is slow to get up for the Bearcats. And Doherty was trying to take away Bingaya's left shoulder. Looked like he almost had a charge there. And Fairmont State, man-to-man, 90-10. -man, They'll play some zone, but it'll be a pressure zone. Anthony Woods' first shot attempt is no good. And Jolly, the sophomore out of Ashburn, Virginia, brings the ball up the floor. He'll shoot the deep three. And the rebound comes down to Endow. Northwest Missouri State, a very good defensive rebounding team, which is what you would expect from their style of half-court man-to-man. Pitt sits the three. A 39% three-point shooter cannot leave the player of the year open like that. Yeah, that was way, that was just bad defense in transition that time. Of all the guys you got to find, he's the one. Big guy down low. Misses again, but Wimbush, he missed the putback. And now Doherty grabs the rebound. Great opportunity for the Falcons, but they still can't get on the board. Interesting, they got Wimbush on pitch. They will do a lot of switching. Winbush is one of their best defenders, but he's 6'7", 6'8", guarding Pitts. And the other thing about Northwest Missouri State, they pick and roll 43% of the time. That's more than almost anybody in Division I or Division II. Six on the shot clock, and Woods really top class for two. One of the things that you see from teams that press a double team a lot, they're, once you get a shot, you usually get a pretty good shot. Fairmont State will either turn you over or you'll get a good shot. Fairmont State is 0 for 4, and they've missed three layups here in the opening minutes. Montgomery driving inside, and now they're 0 for 5. There's the press, and Woods up ahead to Schneider, a very dangerous three-point shooter. And this team... One of the best half-court offensive teams in the country. Woods behind the back to Doherty. A 7-0 start for the Bearcats. Bingaya will take a three. Just a raucous atmosphere here in Sioux Falls. The problem with this team is if you let them run their half-court stuff, they will cut you apart. You've got to try and get them out of their stuff. That's what Fairmont State would like to do like that. And there's the turnover. Jolly in transition. Jolly end-to-end. Missed it. And Pitts corrals it. And you know, Andrew, let's understand this. Fairmont State in the game on Thursday had two turnovers the entire game. They're one of the best in the nation at protecting the ball, which goes hand in hand with their style. Pitts another three. Doherty skying for the rebound, but Bingaya takes it away. Fairmont State has missed five layups. They average 95 points per game, which is third best in Division II, yet still without a point. Wimbush changes that. He is their best athlete. He's also a very, very good three-point shooter, but his real value is at the top of their press in the full court. And look, that slow tempo for the Bearcats. And look what Quinbush is doing the pitch. He's just denying him. He's face guarding him. A foul is called on the Falcons, and we have a timeout on the floor. What a start for the Bearcats. 1992 from Northwest Missouri State. Grew up in Maryville, and, uh, and we know who he's rooting for today. Well, is he going to take shots of Fairmont State, I hope, while he's up there? It's very controversial that he got this assignment, and we'll have to do a complete review after the completion of this game. Anthony Woods is at the free throw line for one more. 
In the semifinals on Thursday, Fairmont State made nine of its first 13 shots. Today, they started 0 for 7 before the Wimbush 3. And you know what? Every possession has been in the half court, which is not what they want or what they do. And a double dribble on Bengaya. Well, here's an opportunity for them to set up their pressure, and that's what they need. This game right now is totally in the half court. Northwest Missouri State, one of the best in the nation in the half court. They get it into Pitts, guarded by Sham God Wells, who's checked into the game. The son of former Providence star, God Sham God. Good defense there by Sham God to cut Wells to cut off that drive by Pitts. You see the shot clock inside 10 a lot for the Bearcats as Woods misses the jumper. Doherty, the offensive rebound. Back up, it was partially blocked by Bengaya, but Northwest Missouri State will reset. How many possessions did they had the other day, Andrew, where they had the ball for 60 seconds? Offensive rebound, start all over. Pitts to the hoop. Pitts had 30 in the semifinals against Lincoln Memorial, nearly a steal by the Bearcats. When Pitts has the ball, you've got to make sure you're ready to help. And here's the problem here. That's bad position. you got to get in here. Even though he's guarding a really good three-point shooter, you've got to be ready to give some help on that. Five early points for Justin Pitts. He's the school's all-time leading scorer with over 1,900 in just his junior season. And a turnover by the Falcons. Woods the other way. A 10-point Bearcat advantage. Called. That's on Endow, his first. Well, that's close. I mean, you take a look at this defense. There's a lot of green shirts in that lane there in the half court. This game has to go much faster for Vermont State. The other day, they had Bellerman completely out of their game and sped up. Right now, not having, not being able to speed up Northwestern State at all. Falcons for 17 turnovers in the semifinals against Bellarmine. It led to 26 points. But so far, the Bearcats have done a great job handling the pressure. Bingaya on the block. Counted and the foul for Matt Bingaya. That was a very good move there, but Darty, you can see, is trying to take away that shoulder, and he made a tough shot. On lefties, most of the time, you got to take away that right shoulder, and that time, Bengaya was able to get to the right shoulder. Two years at Southern Miss, now in his second and final season with Fairmont State. Matt Bengaya, the native of Delaware, Ohio. First team All-American. Look out! Endow went up above, and Wimbush with the hard foul. Well, this is a great way to break this pressure, which is attack quickly. Endow goes, he's in the corner. If he waits for a split second, a double team is coming. If he takes it and goes right away, the double team can't get there. That's good offense against the pressure. Foul was on Bengaya, who's had foul trouble during the Elite Eight. Watch Masters Live on CBSSports.com for exclusive video of Amen Corner 15 and 16, featured groups plus highlights and analysis. Watch live on CBSSports.com and Masters.com. So far, Endow has four rebounds for the Bearcats. Fairmont State as a team has just three rebounds and an offensive foul. An illegal screen called on Thomas Wimbush. When you play good half-court teams, if your pressure isn't on point, they seem to be a half a step slow tonight. They can make it really a long day for you. Northwest Missouri State only averages eight turnovers per game, second best in the country as Endow lays in two more. Meanwhile, Fairmont State, as you saw, forces 17 turnovers per game. This is a clinic on how to break pressure, by the way. 
Stockman a good shooter, 15-footer is an air ball. Stockman had a career-high 23 thanks to five threes in the semifinals and another defensive breakdown for the Fighting Falcons who are all out of sorts here in the first half. You take a look at how Northwest Missouri State breaks the press. Just stop it right there. This is what you want. A guy in the middle of the floor. Once that ball goes to the middle of the floor, you have a three on two. Look at the three green shirts against the two white shirts. It only leads to good things for the offense. Great breaking of the pressure. Foul was on Wimbush. That's his second for the Falcons. As Woods misses the first free throw, he's just a 48% free throw shooter. Andrews Evans back into the game. As you see, Ben McCullum, the head coach, in his eighth season with the Bearcats. And he was named the NABC Coach of the Year. So Northwest Missouri State has the Coach of the Year and the Player of the Year this season in Justin Pitts. Pinkaya spinning inside and finishes. He's really tough going to the basket. That's his game. He's made about 18 threes this year, but it's taking the ball and slashing. That's his game. And there's trouble with the pressure. A turnover by Northwest Missouri State. That's their second, which matches their total in the semifinals on Thursday. And Jolly scores two off the turnover. And that was an unforced turnover, that last one by Northwest Missouri State. But what happens is they start to grade on you when they come after you every single play. It was a good pass made. Oh. Schneider, corner three, book it. That is his 108th three-pointer this season. Yes, that's a school record. But he is the statistical anomaly of anomalies. Here's a guy who's played 35 minutes a game for 36 games. He has, how about this, three two-point field goals all season. And two of them were the other day in the Elite Eight. I've never seen that before. He had one two-point field goal all year. A block by Endow. Talk about a specialist. I love how excited you are about his stats as Pitts misses the three. I've never seen that. I've, do, I've been doing this a lot. I've been in the game a long time. I have never seen a guy come into postseason with one two-point field goal, plays 35 minutes. He actually plays the second most minutes in Division II all year. That's incredible. And three twos. If he has a two tonight, I may throw him a party. <laughs> Ten to shoot. Jolly on the drive. Tied up. And he turns it over. Turnover number four by Fairmont State, who won a school record 34 games this year. Pitts trying to get by Jolly. And he does. You know, when your thing is pressure, pressure, all you, you're always too close to your man. That's why there's no help in the half court for Fairmont State. It's just not how they play defensively, but you can get burnt by a team and a player like Pitts. 8-2 in points off turnovers in favor of the Bearcats as we have a foul, and that leads us to a timeout. There is Schneider, three for four from two, and 108 threes after that. I don't know about this driving me and I'm sleeping stuff. Come on. He also said that you sing a great My Girl. <laughs> I'd like to hear that at some point today, if possible. As we have an offensive foul on Fairmont State. That's the second on Bingaya. He continues to get in foul trouble. He had four in both the quarterfinals and the semifinals, and now two here in the first half. Part of our tradition at Villanova was every new guy had to sing a song, whether it was a new player or a new coach. So when I got there, I had to sing a song. I sang my girl. Roley loved it so much, he made me do it every year. <laughs> and a travel is called. And Jared Calhoun, also played for Roley Massimino at Cleveland State two years there under Massimino. Well, he had a couple of pretty good mentors, Coach Massimino and, Bo and uh, Bob Huggins. Yeah, a total of six years with Bob Huggins, five at West Virginia, and that's where you see a lot of these press principles come from, both Massimino and Huggins, but primarily Huggins with the Mountaineers, as Wells misses. Well, it was funny because we were watching practice. He goes, hey, coach, remember the white defense? I, I remember, even though Coach Mass had about 60 of them. It's impressive that you remember. I remember, I don't remember them all, but I remember a lot of them. 
And right now, this kid is once again, Pitts controlling the entire game. He's got the ball in his hands all the time. Good defense here. Five to shoot. Wells all over Pitts. Pitts trying to get around Wells. He can't put an offensive rebound, but Pitts' shot never hit the rim, so a shot clock violation. Checking in the game from Northwest Missouri, state number 20, Anthony Woods. Ben McCullum also played collegiately two years at Northwest Missouri State. In fact, this is his third Elite Eight with the Bearcats. One as a player, one as a grad assistant, and now as the head coach. Fighting Falcons struggling early with more turnovers than field goals in the first half. I mean, for this team to have only nine, ten minutes into the game is great defense and great game planning by Northwest Missouri State. Wells had it poked away, but it will stay with the Falcons. However, just three on the shot clock. They're fronting the low post. In position to help all the time when you pack it in. And a whistle before the inbound. And a foul is called on the Bearcats. And that's the first foul on Anthony Woods, and that will reset the shot clock. Three from Montgomery is good, and a 42% three-point shooter. And now they have the full court press coming, which is a good idea. They've been using the three-quarter. The full is what really gets you out of whack. Devontae Mosby, the senior out of Independence, Missouri, bringing the ball into the front court. And McCollum said we're going to need good passers today, and that's a foul on the Falcons, the first on Troy Cantrell. Well, Northwest Missouri State's guards, led by Pitts, the player of the year, have really controlled everything in this game. You see all those drives to the basket. As I said earlier, the problem is when you're a pressure team, you're not really preaching help defense. You're preaching, you're, you're preaching pressuring your man, so you're not ready to help as well. And that's a problem if you're going to allow Northwest Missouri State to get in the half court. There it is again. Pitts and Woods, 13 points on 5 of 10 shooting. Pitts, two more. This kid can change speeds as good as anyone that I have seen the entire year. Stop and go and change direction. Montgomery's three won't go this time, but Wells the offensive rebound and put back. Wells is the school's all-time leader in assists and steals. His father, God Shamgod, now in the player development program with the Dallas Mavericks, is not here today because of his duties with the Mavs. But he watches every game and will call his son to break down the latest game. And the other day, it was Shamgod Wells who got hit in the nose, and that's what his father wanted to know right away. How you feeling? Took a big shot in the nose. Wells again down low, but this time it won't go. And now look at look at DeAndre Stockman. He's guarding Pitts and trying to face guard him so he doesn't get it. But they're comfortable with other people bringing the ball up in this game. Coach McCollum, that's a good plan. Pass is intercepted and a turnover. Stockman up ahead, lays it in. Fairmont State has missed seven layups in the first half, but Stockman gets that one to go. Coming off a career-high 23 against Bellarmine in the semifinals. Pitts for three. Long rebound. Stockman goes to the ground, gets it over to Wells. Great job by Stockman there. Wells on the attack. Back out to Montgomery. Inside seven minutes to go, first half of the Division II National Championship game presented by Reese's. Cantrell from the free throw line. Can't find the touch. Just don't have the same comfort level in the half court. In the semis on Thursday, Fairmont State had 46 points at the half. First half today with 6.20 to go. They have 16. And a foul 
is called on Stockman. And a timeout with 6.15 to go in the first. Stockman a little slow to get up. He was grabbing onto his left leg as he went down. An injury update, here's Jamie Erdahl. DeAndre Stockman, I would say over the last two possessions before that media timeout was having a lot of pain in that left knee. He came to the bench, he was having a hard time straightening that knee. Team doctors were assessing him and they have now taken him into the locker room. A tough break for Fairmont State. He had a career high 23 on Thursday. And Jamie had 91 three-pointers this year, fourth most in school history. So they need Stockman to be able to get back out there. Off the free throw miss, Montgomery with the rebound. He was tremendous last night, five out of six from three. Jason Jolly is back in the game. He's got the ball with six minutes to go in the first. Winbush returns as well with two fouls. And Wells is three, and he's fouled. So Sham God Wells will shoot three. He does a good job of driving and then coming out to the opposite corner where he kind of got lost by Northwest Missouri State. Grew up in Harlem, New York, attended LaSalle Academy, did not have any offers coming out of high school. Jared Calhoun and the Falcons offered him on the phone and he accepted without visiting Fairmont State. So said to him, what was it like the first time you showed up into Fairmont, West Virginia? And he said, well, it's busier in New York City at 3 a.m. than it is in Fairmont at 3 p.m. <laughs> but he does not regret his decision one bit. He loves playing for the Falcons and mentioned he's the son of God, Sham God, former Providence star. And he, Asked him, what's the best advice your dad has given you? He said, be yourself. He never put any pressure on me to follow in his footsteps. He wanted me to be me, and that has served me well. Well, God shame God, he dropped a couple on me, too, back <laughs> in the 90s, believe me. It's like the Lapis reunion tour here today. <laughs> Pitts, the floater won't go. He's perfected that shot, but he misses it, his first attempt here. And the rebound is corralled by Wimbush. This is a very sound, fundamental, half-court defensive team. Schneider clears the glass for the Bearcats. Every shot is challenged. They haven't gotten one easy drive to the basket where there's been no help. Falcons shooting just 33% in the first half. You can't leave him alone. Five to shoot. Mosby puts it on the deck and attacks for two. Very strong. He can put the ball on the floor, and he's got a terrific left around the basket, which he is. He's a left. First bench points today for Northwest Missouri State. But you can see Fairmont State doing a lot of standing around in the half court. Good move. Andrews Evans misses the putback. Fairmont State is also scores more than any other team in Division II on offensive rebounding. That's not working today either. Look at this kid change speeds. Stop, go, fast, slow. And a whistle down low and a foul with 11 on the shot clock. Been a frustrating first half for Jared Calhoun and the Fighting Falcons as the Bearcats are playing for in this first half for the Falcons who have missed 10 layups. There's Mosby at the line. And he makes the front end of the one and one. DJ Stockman just came back out onto the Falcons bench. So we'll see if he's able to go for Jared Calhoun. Junior out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. He spent two years at Division III Marymount and then transferred to Division II Fairmont State prior to this season. Wimbush launches from deep. And the rebound of Woods. 
they need to have someone. Now, Bengaya's got those two fouls. I might have brought him back in, but he's been in foul trouble this whole tournament in the Elite Eight. But they need him. He's their best low post option. And right now, they need an option in the low post. Doherty. Good defense by Andrews Evans. How about this in the Elite Eight? And in the semifinals Thursday, combine those two games, the Falcons trailed for a total of 14 seconds. Today they've trailed for 15 and a half minutes. Look at this defense. Montgomery gets his own miss. He'll bring it back out to Jolly. And there haven't been any open looks from the three-point line. Everything is contested hard. Wimbush another three. And the long rebound to Wells. Wells' his pass goes out of bounds. Turnover number six by the Fighting Falcons. Strangers will meet for the first time at the starting line. Don't miss the Amazing Race season premiere Thursday at 10 9 Central, only CBS. You know, one thing I always say, Andrew, a pressing team is much more effective at home. Well, this is almost a home game for Northwest Missouri State, and that's why they've been able to control the tempo. Fairmont State not getting any help from this crowd and their pressure. Schneider short on the three. Rebound to Doherty on the ground, but Jolly rips it away. He wants to push. Jolly end to end. Jolly, tough glass, tough shot for Jason Jolly. And when they score, now they can set up the full court pressure. Pitts up ahead to Endow. Endow! Oh, goaltending is called. Wimbush too aggressive on that block attempt. Well, Northwest Missouri State, when they do get pressed, what hasn't been that often because they haven't been able to score Fairmont State, they throw over the top and have been getting three-on-ones and two-on-ones all day. Fairmont State only lost two games this entire season, both to the same team, West Liberty, out of the Mountain East. They're in the same conference. Beat them twice. Sholly again is able to get to the rim. Nine-point game with 140 to go. Good move there. One of the rare times where there's no help. Jolly's got six points. Great ball. Look at this. This is what you call team one up. And Endow missed it. Out of bounds to the Falcons, but now the officials are going to get together and they're going to overturn the call. Yes, that's off white. Montgomery touched it last. Fresh 30 for the Bearcats. Trying to deny Pitts the ball. Great job there, but... Endow another three. Endow trying to save it. Montgomery comes away with it at midcourt. With one minute to go in the first half. Again, the Falcons are sloppy. Seventh turnover by Fairmont State. And a timeout is called by the Bearcats with 47 seconds to go in the first. See that statistic? They've only forced five turnovers. They usually force 18 a game, not getting anything off their pressure. The tempo being controlled by Northwest Missouri State. Pitch to Endow on the baseline, and he lays it in. Shot clock turned off. And what a first half it's been for Northwest Missouri State. And for Endow, who's got seven points and eight rebounds. Jolly with three seconds. Jolly deep three. Won't go, and that will do it. A dominant defensive first half by the Bearcats. And they lead by 11 at the break. 
Stockman, the player we saw leave halfway through the first half, he is able to return. He had his left knee wrapped up. That's good news for the Falcons, who have only trailed at the half two times this year, December 4th against West Liberty and February 11th against Notre Dame, Ohio. They were down two at the half in both those games, and they came back to win both of those games. I think a big key here, Andrew, is having Bengaya back in the game who sat for a long time with those two fouls. He is their low post scorer. When you're going to play half court, you need a low post scorer. He sat 10 minutes and 46 seconds in that first half because of foul trouble. He's got the ball here on the wing. Now he goes baseline, and Bengaya high off the backboard, no good. Very tough shot there. Oh, can't leave him alone. Pitts for three. And somehow Doherty comes up with it and he's fouled. Looked like that ball was ticketed to go out of bounds and instead Doherty will go to the free throw line. First foul on Andrews Evans of Fairmont State. Not only did the Bearcats hold the Falcons to just 21 points and 31% shooting. They only committed five fouls in the first half. Five fouls, and Fairmont State, who averages almost 11 steals a game, number nine in Division Two, had only three steals. If they don't, and they got four points off those three steals, if they don't generate offense off their defense, then they're not playing their game. And the best thing you can do is make a team not play their game, make them play yours. And that's what Northwestern State has done so well here. They trailed a combined 14 seconds in the last two games coming in today. Close to 20 minutes playing from behind. And a foul inside against Northwest Missouri State. That's the second on Brett Doherty. Northwest Missouri State comes in on a 10-game win streak. Earlier this year, they won 24 in a row. And another quick foul against the Bearcats. And another quick one on Brett Doherty, who picks up his third. They don't lose a whole lot, though, with Mosby's coming in for Doherty now. And he's been terrific. Two fouls in four seconds. And Big Gaia makes the first free throw. This week, Colbert's all new with the hosts of the ACM Awards, Luke Bryan and Dirks Bentley. Plus, Monday, catch Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. Colbert, the smart choice. Big Gaia, one out of two. And I give Coach McCollum credit. He hasn't forced the ball into Justin Pitts' hands. He's allowed other people to bring it up. That's a 10-second violation. Well, it didn't work that time, that's for sure. But the whole first half, other people brought the ball up, and then they got the ball to Pitts when they were already up in the half court. That time delayed too long. Turnover number six by Northwest Missouri State. Again, they only average 8.7 per game. Second best in Division Two, And they are looking for Bengay on every possession, which is a good idea. His jumper is off the mark, and the rebound in Northwest Missouri State. These two teams have been ranked one in the NABC poll every week since December 13th. Either one of the two as Pitts connects and he's got a dozen. Wimbush doesn't have the answer. Endow got the rebound and then fouled by Wells. Second on Sham God Wells. Look at this. I mean, for Pitts to be that open, and that is perfect rotation of the basketball that time. The great backspin on it. That's close. It goes in the books as the 10th rebound for Endow. His career high is 11. I don't know how they can leave Pitts that alone. There's the turnover. Pinkaya. Goes right to the hoop for two. And that's, exact, that's exactly what they do. 
Turning up the intensity as Pitts gets by everybody, but Wells pokes it away from behind. Good defense and hustle by Sham God Wells. I mean, this is great hustle here by Sham God Wells. The thing about Fairmont State, though, is they need to get two or three of those steals in a row, and that's what they have not been able to do. Stockman comes out, still hobbling on that left leg. A 12-point lead for the Bearcats. Mosby, guarded by Bingaya. Offensive foul. Now Bingaya aggressive with the two fouls, and that time he drew the charge. Well, they were clearing the side out for Mosby. There's nobody near him, so he can go one-on-one. -on -one. A good job by Bingaya to take that charge. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Bearcats, and they have now matched their season average with eight. Bingaya with a tough two inside. He's the difference. He sat out for those 10, 11 minutes in the first half, Andrew, made a huge difference. Schneider for three. And here comes Wimbush. Bingaya has all five points for the Falcons this half. And now he's got all seven. And Ben McCollum wants a timeout. The Falcons flying high out of intermission. They've cut it down to eight. It's a 6-0 run. Scored all seven here in the second. He's five of 10 for the day. And the rest of the team for the Falcons, seven for 25. And here's that one, two, two, three quarter court press. And they do a great job of faking passes. When you play a team that's this aggressive looking for steals, faking passes is a huge thing to do. Pitts styles it up from deep. He's got 15. You know what they've done so well to today, Andrew? They've picked their spots in terms of attacking the pressure and pulling it out and done it very, very well. Riding the hot hand with Bincaya, and an offensive foul is called. That's his third with 15.55 to go. He's sat for a chair out for him. So it's not like even during a timeout, he could sit for a second. There is no chair for the head coach on the Bearcats bench. He cannot sit. And neither is Matt Bingaya, who stays on the floor with three fouls. Are you surprised by that? No, I'm not. I, I might have taken him out for a minute or two, but you can't do much because he's the only real half-court option they have so far in this game. Four on the shot clock. Woods, that's a two, and he hits it. The worst thing that could happen to Fairmont State is Northwest Missouri State hold the ball like that and with two seconds to go on the shot clock, make a basket. Here at the Pentagon, the blue line is the three-point line for college. The NBA D-League is here, the Sioux Falls Sky Force, and that's the deeper white line as Wimbush scores. Five minutes into the second half. Force a pass inside. And it's out of bounds, and that really could have been the fourth foul. And now they're going to call it. The trailing official who wasn't in front of the play just called a foul on Bengaya, which is his fourth. That is a tough angle to make this call from. And there's a referee out right there under the basket. Wow. There was an official right there. He right said out of bounds. And then the official from behind the play just called a critical fourth foul on Matt Bingaya. But this kid's been in foul trouble all three days. He has really struggled to stay on the court. And you know what? He's got to be careful. He knows he's got three. He cannot get the fourth there. He's third, a senior. Third straight game. Bingaya's had four fouls. And another foul is called on Fairmont State. This one goes on Wells. And that's his third. You know, the danger here, Andrew, is if Fairmont State starts to get too jumpy because they're feeling like it's getting away a little bit, that's when this kind of team can really cut them up in the half court. They've got to be careful about getting too jumpy here and getting too pressed. Out. Four on Bingaya, three on Wells, who stays on the floor. 
Mosby down low. Out of bounds to the Bearcats. And that was good D by Evans Andrews there, one of the best shot blockers in the history of the school. Second all time with 235 blocks for Fairmont State. Clearing out a side here for Mosby. They look at look, they all cleared out. Pretty good play. But he missed it. Wow. Out of bounds to the Falcons. Well, this year, Jared Calhoun and the Falcons 11 and 1 on the road. And there's no doubt this feels like a road game. And he told us our kids will not back down from a tough atmosphere. We will be up to play this one. Well, so far they've struggled in this game, more so than they have in any game this year. And Endow was out of bounds. Meanwhile, Northwest Missouri State has won 37 in a row at home. Look, they've lost one game all year. They obviously are a terrific team. 18-0 at home this year. Their only loss was to Missouri Southern back on February 18th. Endow is tied a career high with 11 rebounds. Good help there by Schneider. Well, scoop shot, won't go. Endow now has a new career high with 12 rebounds. These guys really guard in the half court. They're all in their stands. They're all alert. Knocked out by Jolly. It'll stay with the Bearcats. Bengaya coming back in with wow. four fouls. 13.42 to go. What do you think? I think it's too early. You're down 11. It's not like you're down 21. I think you got to keep him out. Now, if it gets to 16 or 17, you bring him in. But this is taking a real, real chance. Obviously, Coach Calhoun feels like this thing's getting away from him a little bit. Rolling the dice with four fouls. Matt Bengaya returns with 13.40 to go. This hit here. Right by Bengaya, who backed off, did not challenge that attack by Pitts. But you got to try and keep this guy in front of you on the perimeter. He's got 17 today. In the NCAA tournament, Pitts has averaged 26 per game. And a whistle inside as Jolly is fouled. Third I mean, foul on Mosby. I mean, this is just not good defense on the ball. I mean, Jolly, they going too hard for a steal was Wimbush in that situation, and he's just gone. And obviously, Bengaya can't mess with him. He's got four fouls. That's an example of getting too jumpy on defense and looking to pressure too much. Tomorrow, get the season's best from Gonzaga and Northwestern's magical runs to a profile of Frank Mason and an interview with Gino Oriema on Geico Presents Best of College Basketball 2017. Fairmont State just two of seven from the line. Jolly just missed. He shoots 85% on the year. One out of two for Jolly. I mean, Fairmont has four steals the whole game. They get it across, and then they'll set up their offense. And the shot clock down to 15 already. And now it's down to four. Pitts challenge on the perimeter. Has to force one up. He does. And Wimbush had the rebound over to Stockman. Good defensive set by the Falcons. Will it lead to offense, which they so desperately need? Bingaya back on the bench for Calhoun. Wimbush! And Jared Calhoun calls timeout. With 12.22 to go in the second half, the lead is 10 for Northwest Missouri State. Frazier teamed up for the Knicks in 1973. Last time the Knicks won a championship, <laughs> by the way. Yes, Knicks fans know that very well. Points in the paint this half, 10-2 in favor of the Falcons, who just called a timeout. They have two remaining. 
They break the pressure, then they pull it out, and they run their half-court offense, and they're very comfortable taking the shot with three seconds to go on the shot clock. They never panic. A lot of it has to do with having this kid Pitts in the backcourt. Doherty guarded by Winbush. That's got to be a foul somewhere. Doherty wins the battle. All that bumping going on has to be a foul. Wimbush and a blocking foul is called on the Bearcats. Wimbush is probably their best option now with Bengay out, but he's a perimeter player. You know, the problem is they need something going to the basket. Now, he tried to do it there. That was pretty close. Second foul on Endow for Ben McCollum's Bearcats. Fairmont State only has two assists in this game and none in the last 15 and a half minutes. They have gotten nothing in transition. This team's game plan, Northwest Missouri State, has been impeccable. Falcons average 17 assists per game. Wimbush is fouled going up. Endow that time really trailed this screen. Didn't jump to the ball nearly as fast as he should have, and that's why Wimbush ends up getting it to the basket. Third foul on Endow, and that sends Wimbush to the line. Endow just picked up two fouls in one second off the clock. Well, you got to give a shout out to the Fairmont State cheerleaders. Fairmont, West Virginia is 1,100 miles away. They left at 6.30 last night drove overnight and got here about an hour before the game to cheer on their team in the national championship game. That's unbelievable. They all come and meet passes. I'll tell you, that's another thing that's very important when you play against teams that press like this. People, Northwest Missouri State is coming to meet the pass. They're not waiting for the ball to come to them. They're coming to the ball. Very important when a team pressures you. Four on the shot clock, Pitts, the floater, and there's the rebound for Andrew Evans. Wimbush, step back three, it's cool. That's a big shot. Haven't been this close in a while. The lead is down to eight. Wimbush has eight of his 11 points this half. Fairmont State just needs to be solid defensively in the half court now. Schneider, deep three. And he's fouled shooting the three. First of all, I don't know how Wimbush was that far away from him to start. So he tries to recover because he knows he's playing against a tremendous three-point shooter. I mean, you can't be that alone. That is really bad defense. What, did he foul him? <laughs> that didn't look like a foul to me. And it results in three free throws for Schneider, who's an 84% free throw shooter. Now let's check in with Jamie Erdahl. Well, as we continue to marvel at Zach Snyder's numbers from beyond the arc, he actually recently passed his assistant coach, Austin Mayer, for the most three-pointers made in school history. So I had to ask Coach what that was like to coach a kid that passes you in history books. He said, I considered sitting him that game just to bask in the glory for a little bit longer. But he actually told us, Zach, not a three-point shooter in high school. He had a great mid-range stroke. It wasn't until he got his strength underneath him when he got to college that those long-range shots started to drop. And Ben McCollum told us in practice he'll shoot 53s and typically make between 45 and 48 of those threes. That's unbelievable. Wimbush for three. Halfway down and out. Sholly somehow gets the rebound and Wimbush drives in and is fouled. Great save on the baseline by one of the shortest guys on the court in Jason Sholly. Winbush is by far the highest level athlete in this game. He can really get up in the air. He's quick. 
great save. And that's the fourth foul on Doherty, who got the worst of that one, too. Boom. Ooh. That's a shot. Jason Jolly, who saved that ball from going out of bounds, listed at 5'7". His coach told us he's more like 5'5", five, five, but he said, if I was a few inches taller, I don't know if I'd be this good. It's made me stronger. He always hears it from opposing fans about his height. He says, I play with a chip on my shoulder, and I'm proud to be my height. And he averages close to 13 points per game. He's had a great start to his career with the Falcons. I know when I was a kid, I wanted to be bigger. <laughs> And as an adult, do you still want to be bigger? Or? Sure, why not? Jolly's father is actually a secret service agent. Well, especially when you make fun of me, we have to sit in chairs because you're so much bigger than me. I don't know about that. <laughs> Five to shoot. Pits. Every time you get something going, Pits. He's got 19. Jolly the lob, and Andrews Evans quiets the crowd. This half, Fairmont State has closed the gap to eight four times. But they have gotten no closer. Down by eight with nine minutes to go. Nice cut. But they work it back out. Andrew Evans thought he had a clean block, and Jared Calhoun not happy. Well, let's take a look at this lob right here. You're going to see, because of the dribble penetration, the help is coming right there, and the lob is going behind. And that's what dribble penetration creates. Somebody helps, you go behind the defense for the lob. Xavier Kurth at the free throw line. And Stockman has been bottled up today. He returns, coming off a career-high 23 in the semis against Bellerman, but today Stockman just two points. Endow back in with three fouls. Northwest Missouri State has just controlled the entire game and kept them at bay. Look where Pitts is playing defense. His heels are on the three-point line. Jolly's 0 for 2 shooting the deep ball today. He's inside here off the side of the rim. And over the back is called on Andrew Evans. And that's his third. And team foul number eight on the Falcons. Boy, that's a killer when you foul 94 feet from the basket and the other team shooting. And Bengaya continues to sit with the four fouls. Now look at the foul trouble for both teams. Doherty has four for the Bearcats. Bengaya with four for the Falcons. How long do you keep them there, coach? It's getting close. Well, close <laughs> enough. He's at the scorer's table. <laughs> when I said he's getting close, he wasn't up yet. That's true. I'll give you credit for that. Bengaya returns. But he was in before for like 30 seconds, which I still can't figure out. Like four or five minutes ago, I still can't figure out why. Mosby, one out of two. Well, if you're going to have him in the game, throw him the ball. He's calling for it. Mosby guarding it. He could have given it to him as soon as he caught it. Wells is fouled. It was a good move by Wells. Not a great job by Northwest Missouri State containing the dribble that time. Sham got Wells in his final game, the senior out of Harlem, New York. 
has done a great job in the classroom, as is this entire Fighting Falcons team. They have a GPA of 3.3, which led their conference, the Mountain East. The what a, what Atlantic a, region champions. What a great kid Wells is, too. We talked to him yesterday. Just a terrific kid. He goes one out of two. Ten-point game, 8.20 to go. Jared Calhoun said he's a budding coach for sure. Yeah, he says he likes to give him a lot of advice on the <laughs> sideline. <laughs> well, his dad's a coach. Oh, good pass. And oh. the finish! Before the shot, there's a foul on Northwest Missouri State, but how about Endow with nine points and 14 rebounds? But this was a big-time pass, too. 19. And Bingaya with 11 points and four fouls with Steve Lapis and Jamie Nerdall. Our producer, Jonathan Siegel, director, Andy Goldberg, statistician, Ethan Cooperson. I'm Andrew Catalan, our entire CBS crew here for the Division II championship game presented by Reese's. Neither team has won a national title in men's basketball. was a travel. Woods got away with one there. Doherty playing the four fouls. Schneider for three. Jolly only has one point this half. And Jolly lost that one, but last touch by the Bearcats. Fairmont State has not helped themselves at the free throw line either. Eight for 16 from the free throw line. Well, wow, that was off his leg. And Ben McCollum knew it, the Northwest Missouri State head coach. Falcons only have one turnover this half. Here's Bingaya. Doherty, who has four fouls, is guarding him. Bingaya around Doherty for two. I think they have to double him. Plus, they know he wants to go left most of the time. Especially when your big men have four fouls, you got to double him or he's just going to score every time. And out to a Great. cutting pitch. For the 22nd time this year, Justin Pitts has scored at least 20 points in a game, but Bingayo with the answer at the other end. And they'll set up their pressure. Endow poked away by Wimbush. Endow gets it back. Endow, and he's fouled by Jolly. Take a look at what Justin Pitts does here on this cut. The first thing that he does is he takes his man, watch, he goes this way first. And that lean is what allows him to get open there. He forces Wells to lean that way, and he goes the other way. That is picture perfect moving without the ball. Take your man one way and go the other way. A one and one for Chris Ibu Endow, who grew up in Norway. And it was Stavanger, Norway, the name of his hometown. Not a lot of competitive basketball around, so he moved five hours away from home when he was in high school just to find some more competitive basketball. He called at the hardest years of his life because he was away from his family, but he wanted to keep this dream alive of playing college basketball in the United States, and here he is playing for a Division II national title all the way from Norway. Wimbush for three. And Doherty goes up high to get it. You know, there's a lot of time left, but you just get the feeling that this Northwest Missouri State team knows how to control a game better than anybody in Division II, for sure. And Falcons only shooting 3 of 14 from deep. What do they have to do? A 
travel is called. You know what they got to do? First of all, they got to get some stops in the half court. They're not, they, they haven't been able, they get to 10, they get to 8, and then Northwest Missouri State scores because they get jumpy. They've got to be more solid in the half court, and they start, they got to start running on makes and misses. They have to push the issue because that's where they're most comfortable. They're not going to win if they play half court game. This team is too good in the half court. You can't beat them at their own game. Vinkaya. And the follow by Wimbush. And out it inbound with five and a half to go. Stolen by Vinkaya. Vinkaya hands off to Wimbush, who's fouled. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Play your game. They've got to play their game. But what happens here, look at Endow. He's taking the ball out of bounds, and he's standing under the basket when he was taking it out. This is a good offensive rebound. Endow could have run the baseline. He doesn't look where he's standing. That basket acts as another defender. Endow could have run the baseline because they just scored. When you play against teams that press like this, after baskets or foul shots, you must run the baseline. Free throws have been a problem for the Falcons today. They are 9 of 17. But Wimbush has had some success. He's 5 for 7 with one more to come. And now get up in that pressure, that full court pressure where Wimbush is on the ball. See, they can't set it now. Trying to do it after a missed free throw. Fifth time this half, the Falcons are within eight. Still can't get any closer. Woods, oh, what a strong take from Anthony Woods. And that's been the story of the game. It looks like they can make a move, and then Northwest Missouri State gets a layup. Wells is able to get to the rim. And the other thing that's helped, they took the ball out fast there. It was a great pass. And then down lays it in. This team knows when to go fast. They know when to go slow. That was a good job of getting that ball out. That's not a good shot. Wimbush misses the three. Wells, the offensive rebound. Over to Charlie, who drives in. Big Gaia, that's an NBA D-League three. It won't go. Endow has his 16th rebound. And he calls timeout with four minutes and 20 seconds to go. Northwest Missouri State still up by 10. Right. Trophy for the winner between Northwest Missouri State and Fairmont State. And my point was that are playing each other in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four. Northwest Missouri State has led since the first minute of the game. Look how they come to the ball. This team is well drilled in beating pressure. Pitts with five on the shot clock. Deep three. Jolly the rebound, and now they need to go. Got to push. Wimbush fakes the three. Crowd wanted to travel. Now Wimbush goes to the ground. Wimbush puts it up off the front of the rim. And Endow with another rebound, his 17th. speeds his shot was blocked and the entire Bearcats bench was looking for a goal tent Wells the other way no call that was a change of speed I just thought he went a little light at the end there it didn't go strong to the basket was it a goal tent oh yes that's goaltending hit the backboard first that's the next rule that's got to be changed. They have to be able to go to the monitor for goal tents. There aren't that many of them, and they always result in baskets or not a basket. Got to go to the monitor for those. Free throws good for Anthony Woods as DJ Stockman returns. He's a very good three-point shooter. Wells comes out. See if Stockman can heat up for the Falcons with just 3.15 to go. Yeah. 
Fairmont State averages 95 points per game. They had 52 with three minutes left. Jolly is rejected by Pitts. They've got nothing easy in this game in the half court. And here comes the trap. But they always are throwing the ball out of the trap just as the trap is getting there. They have not been in trouble with the ball almost the whole game. Doherty. They're working around with four on the shot clock. Woods. And that's an offensive foul on Anthony Woods. How about Justin Pitts getting it done defensively? Watch this defense from behind. What great timing that was. Pitts, the junior out of Blue Springs, Missouri. His dad was transferred to New Orleans during his junior year. whole family moved there, but he wanted to stay in Missouri. He had established himself there, wanted to finish his career at Blue Springs South. It was a tough decision, but it paid off for Pitts. He's the D2 player of the year. Wimbush's three is no good, and Pitts has it. Great box out by Snyder that time. That was just Pitts' 13th career block. And there's the whistle with 2.10 to go. Two free throws the rest of the way for the Bearcats. Fourth foul on Jason Jolly. The pace of this game was set very early, Andrew, from the way beginning. Northwest Missouri State made it very clear we are not going to be thrown out of our game, and they have not been not one bit. And that number one, Justin Pitts, he can control a game with anybody in America. Two big misses. Still a 12 point lead for Northwest Missouri State. Big Kyle will drop. Missed it. Defended by Doherty. And now less than two minutes to go. Northwest Missouri State only has one turnover in the last seven minutes. Against a team that, that's what they live for, every possession. But they've spread them out, and they haven't even been able to get good traps on them in this game. Endow launches. And hits it! the left that's Ben McCullum's wife Michelle they can start to taste it here in Sioux Falls and a whistle and a foul committed by the Bearcats well this would be the first time in Division II history that the same school won national titles in football and men's basketball in the same year Northwest Missouri State's football team beat North Alabama. They've actually won back-to-back -back national titles in football. In Division I, Florida did it in the 06-07 school year. But the football team has won four of the last eight national titles at Northwest Missouri State. And the basketball team, 122 away from joining them as national champions. Full court pressure with 122 to play. Oh, nearly a steal by Stockman. Instead, Pitts has it. Whoa, what move by Pitts. I mean, the, the change of speed to me is what I've really seen that makes him special. And the Falcons give the foul. That's number five on Jason Jolly. He's fouled out. Ben McCollum's son, Peyton. He told you he's just like his dad. He wasn't even smiling there like his dad. He <laughs> got a standing, smile. Standing, he's too. standing as well, yes. What a day for Endow. 15 points and 18 rebounds. It's his fifth double-double of the season. Both these coaches do a great job. Today, it was Ben McCollum and his game plan that got this thing done. Northwest Missouri State came in really hungry to this season. Lost in 
the Sweet 16 each of the last three years. Bingaya gets his own miss and puts it back up and in. Bingaya has 19 points and five rebounds. Mosby is fouled by Wimbush with 51 seconds to go. Mosby, a transfer from William Jewell, now a senior at Northwest Missouri State. A 13-point lead. Guy again gets his own miss, puts it back up, and in, and the foul. And Ben McCollum was making it very clear to his team, do not foul. 21 for Bengaya. I don't know if he got fouled there. The fewest points Fairmont State has scored in a game this year is 65. That just gives you an idea of the defensive job the Bearcats have done today. And not only that, Andrew, the, the tempo on offense is, is as equally as important to doing what they did to here did today than their half-court defense. Pitts is at the line, the NABC Player of the Year with 21 points today. Another killer for the Falcons today, Steve. They missed 20 layups. That's ridiculous. But you know what? This team defends the basket very well. They were easy shots, no question, but they were contested. Cleans up his own miss once again with 29 seconds to go. And Mosby is fouled. They're getting ready to hand out the trophy here in Sioux Falls. Just an amazing crowd here at the Pentagon. Many in green with Maryville, Missouri being only four hours away. But this has just been an awesome week here in South Dakota and a great atmosphere for the championship game. Great for these kids to play in this environment for a national championship. Mosby the rebound. Jared Calhoun says, don't foul. <laughs> Northwest Missouri State wins its first national title.